Nobody can come here if Mr. Harmon doesn't want him to. Anybody with a gun must give it to Mr. Gage before it gets dark. Everybody's dog must be of the same sex and visitors can't have any dogs at all. Nobody can shoot birds. Anything else, ask Mr. Harmon. Martin Coles Harriman had been an entrepreneur and uh, bought the island early in his career. It was 1903 when he was 19, I think, on a steamer with a friend. On the way down to the boat, he said, I'm going to buy this place one day. Well, he was then an office boy. And by 1925, he was chairman of companies and he bought it for £25,000. He wanted to make Lundy's mark as an independent, wonderful place. Mr Harmon wouldn't have any representatives of mainland authorities on the island, any kind. He wanted to say what should happen and what shouldn't happen, but he didn't see the point of owning something and not being the boss. <laughs> He felt that it was his kingdom and it was outside all the rules. It was his. And so he felt entitled to repel borders. He took over the mail service himself. And then he also uh, dismissed <laughs> the Coast Guards and Lloyd Signal Station and undertook to do that himself. He wanted to have his own man here because he knew he wouldn't be here himself much as he'd love to be. He put a, an agent on the island um, in the guise of a chap called Felix Gade. He was very good with people and Mr. and Mrs. Gade enjoyed the visitors so much. It was their life, of course. They looked forward to people's visits and they were very welcoming. A lot of us used to go very regularly, often. And it was great fun. It was like a big family. <laughs> And you've got different characters like you would in any any village. But within that, there was this amazing acceptance of each other, which, well, there are very few places you're going to find that. And life was very simple and very hard for everybody, but they all had a, a knack of getting round the worst of it and making the best of things. We had to gel because it, was, it really was teamwork. Really didn't sleep much at all. That's probably why we cried so much and laughed so much. It was a bit, we were a bit hyper, but yes, it was, it was fun. and it became the place everybody wanted to, to go to. 
sometimes they regretted it terribly when it was very rough. Lundy, by its very nature um, and its position in the Bristol Channel, can face quite severe weather, um, especially through the winter. And for periods of time, uh, they would be cut off for months on end. It seemed to be quite dangerous sometimes. When we went over on the Lundy Gannet, um, from Biddeford, that was always from Biddeford, with Fred, who liked to drink, we were just all out on deck and sometimes it was very cold, sometimes very rough, a lot of people being sick, and no loo, there was only a bucket down below. It just draws out of people their willingness to meet whatever it is that happens to them for the sake of being here. Health and safety doesn't come into it. <laughs> people were very game. It's a truly unique experience to go there, and he set that up. He had great interest in it and um, you know, did a great amount for the island and introduced odd things. He imported wallabies and they died. He imported swans and they flew off. That was my father's enjoyment, introducing peacocks, pennies, geese, the whole thing, you see. So packaged up some special cigarettes because it was damp on Lundy and the cigarettes didn't keep very well. So they were put in a tin. They had Lundy lights and leads. That was his idea that the island could light, metaphorically, and lead the way to the exploration of the mind and the being. He decided to set up his own postal service he brought out some stamps to cover the cost between the mainland and Lundy after the post office was no longer carrying the mails. And in 1929, uh, he issued uh, two coins. It was only used on the island and there was just one bank in Biddeford that would swap them. It was probably just um, a little gimmick because he felt that Lundy was his kingdom. The government took a bit of a dim view on that because it, the coins, uh, as today, should have the head of state on, on the back, but he actually had his own uh, head imprinted on the back. And he was apprehended. There was a local court at Biddeford. He lost that, so there was an appeal. So the High Court was an appeal against the decision of the magistrates at Biddeford, which he also lost. But he was, he was congratulated on the way he conducted his appeal and said it was very amusing in places. <laughs> and of course it's a very audacious and wrong thing to do, to think you can bring new coins into the realm like that. But my father's point was that it was respectful to the king, but out of the jurisdiction of officialdom. I mean, he tried it too hard and everybody knew it wouldn't work. I think if I'd been the government, I'd have let him have it, have the coinage. 
on, on the grounds that people like him aren't born every day. They just aren't. Mr. Harmon never called himself king. The king was, it was a media invention. If you've got reporters going over there, they will apply that. He never ever saw himself in that light. Anyone who was dead set on buying an island and bought an island and stayed with it, investing whatever he could spare out of what he earned for it, and who opened it to other people, and who we are talking about 60 years on, must have been somebody really, really special. Clear. He wanted to achieve or to keep it peaceful, tranquil, beautiful, quiet, and a nature reserve, which is actually what it became. <laughs> he loved it and he wanted everybody else to share in this peerless kingdom. There's certain something about Lundy which you can't quite define. If, if you feel it, you've got it. Um, and if you haven't, you know, you, you can't quite describe it. I think it is the feeling of utter peace when you're there. don't think you can put your finger on magic. <laughs> Just don't. You'll know when you've been. It'll either get you or it won't. I don't think it would be exaggeration to say that if the island moves you in any way, it's he who started it off. <laughs>